Okay, it is time to get started. So without further delay. Um, so this week, lesson six is called, If You Care Hard, You Will Work Hard. And it is all about defining and clarifying your values and identifying barriers to, a, um, to fulfilling those values on a daily basis. And this is in preparation for what we're going to be starting next week which is really delving into creating a personalized strategic action plan. And so that is where we're going to be talking about our goals and um, the action plans to meet those goals. But today is all about uh, defining our values and creating our guideposts or our compass to, to which we're going to orient our lives. So the, the writing activity for this lesson, the writing prompt is my favorite part about myself. And this is a really good one to kind of introduce and step into defining our values um, because it is a way for us to really tap into the things that we love most about ourselves, the things that we want to um, emphasize and we want other people to value as well. So for this writing prompt, my response really centered around this idea about my favorite part of myself being that I am tenacious and I don't give up easily. And as you've heard throughout the lesson so far, this hasn't always been the truth for me. This hasn't been something that I would be able, I would have said, you know, growing up in my childhood. Growing up in my childhood, I would have I define myself more as scrappy, um, but the what I felt on a daily basis was this sense of just sadness and loneliness. I had very few friends. I gave up on myself. I gave up on things very easily for fe fear for fear for fear of failure, and that fear in my mind and in reality was real because. It was, you know, through years of torture, you know, at, you know, from my dad and from my brother that really um, instilled this fear in me that if I, if I failed, if I messed up, if I wasn't perfect, if things weren't just right, I would be made fun of and berated and talked down to and told I wasn't good enough. And so, you know, this fear that was instilled in me was real to me and um, caused me to do things like avoid taking chances for fear of failure, or even when I did try to do things, I would give up really easily if it was too hard, if it was too much effort, or if I didn't think that, that things were going to be perfect enough. But over the years, this has really you know, developed in me a sense of strength and courage. And so I was thinking about this when I was writing, and whether or not I would um give up or change something about my childhood and i you know while you know on one hand yes i do think i do feel like i could have had a better childhood or better upbringing it that all of those experiences kind of created in me the person that i am today and has provided me this you know strength and courage and i've been able to harness that pain into really powerful action. So at this point, you know, now I'm able to harness that and not give up and not back down in the service of um, ensuring that truth and justice prevail at all times. And so for myself, I value, and my favorite part of myself is that I am tenacious and I like to be a model and I want to be a model for others so they can be tenacious as well and use their pain and turn it into a purpose because in our pain exists our values. Um, <clears throat> so when thinking about values, there are a few distinctions that we need to make. So a few months ago, as I was um, going onto social media and beginning to interact more with other professionals in the field around the idea of values, I made a comment one time that you know, that we as humans, not in, you know, 
in the world, not just America, but human beings who are inhabitants of this world, it would be really wonderful if we could all, um, if we could all agree upon a shared set of values to, that would guide our lives. And another professional out there commented back that, you know, values are individually chosen things and they're guided by, you know, per a person's experience and what they care about most. And when I first got that response back, I was kind of taken aback because I, you know, I strongly believe that if we don't have a shared sense of what really matters, then it's going to be really difficult for us to, as a collective, get anywhere that matters, get anywhere important. And so as I was further studying and reading and putting, um, putting my thoughts together around this idea, I came across this idea and a distinction between guiding principles and values. And so um, when I think about kind of the things that I wish and that I hope that we all can eventually agree upon as humankind, is not necessarily values because those are personal in nature and are guided by your experience and the things that you care care about and can change over time but they're your guideposts but what i really was trying to get at with my original comment and uh, was this idea of guiding principles and so what i wanted to do was share my guiding principles and kind of my idea as a behavioral scientist and as a human being, what, you know, what those things are that are you know, my underpinnings and foundation for the things that I do and kind of the, and the values that I have and the decisions that I make. So um, the four things that I would kind of encapsulate into my guiding principles are the philosophical underpinnings of behavioral science, the seven dimensions of applied behavior analysis, my personal life motto and code, and then the BACB professional and ethical code of conduct. And so I feel as though these concepts um, and these principles really encapsulate what it means to be a, uh, to be a human being and to really um, strive for greatness in our lives. And so the philosophical underpinnings include determinism, so all behavior is lawful, parsimony, you know, the explanations that we have for things and why things happen are based on the simplest explanations. We know that behavior is selected over time and over generations through, um, through evolutionary, uh, selection, learning, and cultural selection. And we also know that experimentation and empiricism is what really allows us to identify what things are effective in changing behavior over time and, and how we can apply that to improve the human experience. The seven dimensions of, be of applied behavior analysis really guide not even not just even what I do with my clients and the people that I work with in terms of developing interventions, but for myself, even it's very important for me to ensure that the things that I'm doing on a daily basis are in alignment with those seven principles and seven dimensions of applied behavior analysis, which is that the you know the decisions that we're making and the interventions that we're trying and are applied they're applied to issues that are socially significant they matter they're behavioral in that the uh, behaviors of interest are objectively defined not subjectively defined they're analytic in nature which means that there's data that there are data that are collected and analyzed over time um, <clears throat> there the interventions are technologically described in clear and concise terms, so it's really clear what we're doing and why we're doing it. They're conceptually systematic to the principles of behavioral science um, and research-based interventions. 
um, and they are effective and efficient and generalizable over um, across context and across time. My personal life motto is to strive to thrive, which to me, uh, thrive has, is an acronym for a set of core values that I, that I have found meaning in and I like to share with others because I think that it's a, a, you know, it's a nice, easy way to remember them. But it's to be, you know, I act in a way and I behave in a way that is trustworthy, honest, respectful, and inspiring which means to me that I am bringing all of my thoughts, words, and actions into alignment with my values. Um, my actions are value-driven and I'm actively engaged in my life. So uh, trustworthy, honest, respectful, inspiring, value-driven, and engaged is, um, the act, are the uh, words that go with Thrive. And then finally, the BACB Professional and Ethical Code of Conduct is an essential document in guiding my behavior on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, this is not only with the clients that I serve or the other professionals with whom I interact, it, they also apply to myself and to make sure that I am grounded in, um, in the scientific world and that I'm being analytic of myself. <clears throat> to make sure that what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis is in alignment with those core values. And I'm demonstrating that across context. So there's no confusion and no conflict in regard to who I am, who I perceive myself to be, and who I am perceived from the outside. And so what I have, over the years, I have worked really hard to clarify my own stance, my own theory or hypothesis about what it will take to create a more peaceful world. Um, so, you know, years ago when I read Walden 2, there was, you know, this moment in my life where I was like, why can't the world just be like this? Why can't there just be a magic wand and you wave it and, you know, everything would, everything would be perfectly in alignment with um, the science of behavior and learning and everybody in this world would have, you know, would live a more peaceful life. Well, magic wands don't exist. You know, things don't just happen overnight. We have the really what I you know am striving for on a daily basis is to help people learn about you know, these you know guiding principles and what they really mean in context to an individual's life, as well as helping to define the skills and qualities. So those you know the qualities and the actual actions that can be taken, which will lead to an individual living a more um, complete and peaceful life, as well as in, uh, kind of instilling that in others in their environment, so in their families, community members, and colleagues. And so my theory is that it, it centers around psychological flexibility and, um, and other skills that are interrelated with psychological flexibility, such as communication, conflict resolution, problem structure, problem solving, um, and you know, diagnostic feedback and, and things of that nature. So my theory is that once a majority of the people on this planet know how, know about um, psychological flexibility and know and and have kind of a foundational understanding of the science and and theory of, of or the science of behavior and learning so that's step one is to kind of develop a knowledge base and step two is to develop that skill base so once once the majority of people on this planet understand the science of behavior and learning and are able to fluently apply the science of behavior and learning to socially significant problems in their own lives, 
the lives of their families and the lives of their community members, then and only then will we be able to truly live a um, healthy, happy, and productive life or live, live lives full of peace, joy, and happiness. And so this is, kind of, this is my mission and this is what I want to you know, put out into the world through the work that I'm doing is this, is this idea that you know, the, the more effectively that we are able to disseminate the science of behavior and learning through both information, so information sharing and skill building, so utilizing the full BST model to ensure that people know and are able, not just know, but are able to utilize the skills. Um, that's when we will hit that, you know, that critical threshold where, uh, where things will start to happen more readily and, and change will happen more positively. So that is kind of provides the context and the foundation for the values work that we're going to do. But the values work in and of itself is a very individualized process. And the values that you are going to define for yourself and that are going to guide your life, to pro they provide the guidepost or the compass the direction in which you want to go. It's not, those aren't the specific goals and they're not the action plans. Goals and action plans are things that can be completed and once they're done, you can check them off your list. And goals and action plans are great. They're very important, um, but they're not the first step. The first step is to really define why we're doing what we're doing. What makes our action valuable or important to ourselves or others in our environment. So that is going to be the focus of today and how what we're going to really delve into. And this past week for me, myself personally has been a very difficult week in that my um, my resolve to and my commitment to my values has been tested and I've experienced, you know, very recently a time in my life where, you know, my values were being tested and it evoked a, um, a painful, a, you know, significantly painful experience and I was able to you know harness that pain, utilize the skills of diffusion and acceptance and self um, and presence in order to simply feel what it was that I was feeling and take action even though I was feeling that pain. And it was because of the value, the strong values that I have that guide me that I was able to push past the pain and not engage in my previous pattern of behavior, which would have been to shut down, hide, and run away from the pain um, in order just to make it go away. Um, but I knew in that moment that I needed to take steps for myself in order to push through it so I could take that step to the next level and really speak life into my own life. So the three things that we are going to do today are to clearly define our values and evaluate how closely they are in alignment with our thoughts, words, and actions. Well, we're going to discuss areas of our lives in which we are in and out of alignment and how this impacts our, our thoughts, words, and actions on a daily basis. And then write about thoughts regarding our misalignments and what we're willing to do in order to realign our thoughts, words, and actions so we can be more in alignment with our values. So this isn't, again, we're not really, we're not necessarily crossing over into the goal development or action planning yet, but this is the groundwork for the work that we're going to um, delve into next week, which is to develop our personalized strategic action.